Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another interesting example of the JE advanced test dealing with thermodynamics. In this particular problem, we're dealing with mixed gases in a particular container at a particular volume and temperature. So we have a container fixed volume. It has a mixture of one mole of hydrogen and one mole of helium in equilibrium at temperature T. If we assume the gases are ideal, we typically do that, what are the correct statements out of these four? Now, if you take a close look at C and D, notice that they have the exact same wording, but different numbers at the end, which means only one or the other can be correct. They cannot be correct at the same time. Of course, they could both be wrong, but they can both be right at the same time. So if you pick one of them, the other one is automatically false. So let's try to see if A is correct. The average energy per mole of the gas mixture is 2RT. Now we have helium and hydrogen. Helium is a monatomic gas, hydrogen is a diatomic gas. So for monatomic, the energy for one mole is equal to 3 over 2RT. That's for one mole. For many moles, you have to multiply times the number of moles. That's because the monatomic gas has 3 degrees of freedom, so it's 3 times 1 half RT. For a diatomic gas, the energy is equal to 5 over 2 RT. So now when we take the average, we simply sum them together and divide by 2. So it would be summing together, that would be 8 over 2 R, let's see, 3 plus 5 is 8 over 2 RT. So that would be 8 over 2 RT divided by 2. That would be 8 divided by 4, which is 2 RT. So that would be the average energy per mole for the two different kinds, and it looks like this number is the same as this number, that means A is a correct statement. All right, now for statement B. The ratio of the speed of sound in the gas mixture, not the speed of the molecules, but the speed of sound in the gas mixture is uh, the ratio to that of helium gas is the square root of 6 over 5. Now, the velocity of sound in a gas is equal to the square root times the bulk modulus divided by the density of the gas. Now, the density of the gas, that's at least the ratio. That would be easy to do because we know they're individual masses. But what about the bulk modulus? Well, it turns out that the bulk modulus of a gas is equal to the pressure of the gas times the adiabatic constant. The adiabatic constant Gamma is equal to the ratio of C sub P divided by C sub V. Now, that will be different for different kinds of gases. For a monatomic gas, gamma is going to be equal to, uh, let's see here, that would be 5 over 2R divided by 3 over 2R. And so you can see that that's equal to 5 over 3. For a diatomic gas, Gamma will be equal to uh, 7 over 2R divided by 5 over 2R, and that would be equal to uh, 7 over 5. Okay, so now in the case of helium, we're dealing with a monatomic gas. But in case of the mixture, we're dealing with a combination of the two. It would be kind of the average of these two numbers. So what is the average of 7 fifths and 5 thirds? Okay, let's try that. So we're looking for the average when we're dealing with 7 over 5 and 5 over 3. So when we take the average, we sum them together and we divide by 2. Now we need a common denominator. That would be 15. So it would be uh, 3 times that. That would be 21 over 15 plus that would be 25 over 15 divided by 2, which is equal to 46 over 15 divided by 2, which is 23 over 15. Okay, 23 over 15. Now, 22.5 over 15, that's equal to 3 over 2. So in other words, 23 over 15 is approximately equal to 3 halves. Not quite, but close enough. So let's go ahead and use that as a number. So now, we go the velocity of sound of, uh, let's see, the ratio of the speed of the gas mixture of, this, of the gas divided by the velocity of sound in the helium. 
So that would be equal to the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density for gas divided by the square root of the bulk modulus divided by density of the helium. All right, so that would be equal to the square root of the bulk modulus of the gas divided by the density of the gas times the density of helium divided by the bulk modulus of helium. Now, of course, instead of using the bulk modulus, notice that instead, since the pressure is the same for both, we can actually use the adiabatic constant. So we're going to replace the bulk modulus by the adiabatic constant and the bulk modulus here by the adiabatic constant because it's proportional. So now that we have that, this is equal to the square root of the constant of the gas, the gas that would be 3 over 2, times the density of helium. Density of helium is 4 grams per mole, divided by the density of the gas. Well, the density of the gas, we have hydrogen and helium combined. Helium is 4, hydrogen is 2 grams per mole, the average would be 3, and the adiabatic constant for helium, well, that would be 3 over 2. Wait a minute, am I doing something wrong here? Ah, I think I'm doing something wrong. Uh, no, it's 5 over 3. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at the wrong number. I was looking over here, but actually I'm supposed to look over here. 5 over 3. Okay, what does that reduce to? Well, let's see here. So, um, well, let's go ahead. That is equal to the square root of uh, 3 times 4 times 3 divided by, here we have 3 in the denominator, we have a 2 in the denominator, and we have a 5 in the denominator. So the 3 and the 3 cancels out, so that will be 12 over 10, so it's equal to the square root of 12 over 10, which is equal to the square root of 6 over 5. Now that looks familiar. Let's take a look over here, and sure enough, that's what we see here. So answer B is correct as well. So both A and B are correct. What about the ratio of the RMS speed, the root mean square speed of the molecules? We have helium to hydrogen. So now we have a mixture of gases with hydrogen and helium, and we need to know the ratio of the RMS speed. So we can say that um, here's the gas, and here's the helium. No, we don't want the gas, we want hydrogen. Hydrogen and helium. So I know that for each molecule in the gas, the kinetic energy is the same. We can say that the kinetic energy of hydrogen is equal to the kinetic energy of helium. And the kinetic energy of hydrogen would be one half mv squared, and the kinetic energy for helium would be one half big M, big V squared. So this is the mass and the velocity of helium, the mass and the velocity of hydrogen. We can get rid of the one halves on both sides. And let's see here, uh, we want the ratio of helium to hydrogen. So what we want is we want the ratio of V to uh, big V to little v. So let's take the square root of both sides. So we have, well, first of all, let's go like this. Little m over big M is equal to big V squared over little v squared. Now if I take the square root of both sides and turn the equation around, I have V over V, which is what we're looking for, the ratio of the speed of helium to the speed of hydrogen is equal to the square root of M over M which is equal to the square root of the mass of hydrogen, because M belongs to the hydrogen, that would be 2, and helium would be 4. So v, big V, that's big V, not little v. Big V over little v is equal to the square root of 1 over 2, which is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2. Do we have that for answers for C and D? Well, it looks like D has that answer, so that looks like that's correct but C is not. So we have three correct answers, A, B, and D, in that mixture of hydrogen and helium. Now trying to do that in about three minutes would be kind of tough. How long did I take? Ten. Ten minutes, yeah. Well, I was also explaining things, so that slows me down, but three minutes to do this problem would be rather a challenge. But anyway, this is how it's done.